Recording, recording. So um, I also know that there may well be some people who crop up in the, they come in and leave because there's a friend of mine from LA is coming in and, and leaving, but he wanted to just get the measure of some, you know, what's going on here, what am I doing? And so what I am doing is, I'll tell you a little story about um, what went on for me at the end of last year. And I told Brooke this recently, so sorry about the repetition, Brooke. You guys, you know, you can all unmute as well. So as long as you don't have noise, we don't want to hear your washing machine, Sylvia. But <laughs> other than that, you can be quite interactive. This is not like a lecture or anything. Um, but an interesting thing happened for me last year. I work with um, my own master healer teacher called Bobby Klein, who is in Mexico. And we met, I think, eight years ago, all in the most bizarre and magical way. And Bobby Klein is, in his own right, quite a, a famous underground healer, profound um, medical medium. So he, he is involved in literally curing people um, of all ailments. But on top of that, just to name a few things, his best friend was Jim Morrison of The Doors. Um, he became world famous instantly because at the age of 16, he was working in LA at a music gig place. And he was just doing things like running, you know, he's a runner. And they said to him in the same week, as far as I know, this happened. This is just like an incredible life story. He was asked if he would uh, buy some weed for a band and the band gave him a camera in exchange. So he went and got some weed. This was California, the 60s. Went and got some weed for the band. The band paid him with a camera and then he was asked if he would drive a band across all of America. And he said yes. And so the band were the doors. And in that week, he basically ended up, he had a professional camera all of a sudden. He started his life as a photographer, photographing the doors and became famous um, overnight, like as a very, very young guy. He was super famous because he was doing shamanic work with Jim Morrison. If you guys don't know who the doors are, I have to really drop in, <laughs> drop in some information. But if you, if you do know who the doors are, you kind of get how that could have been. A... Hello, Mona, lovely to see you. Um, so as he drove across America, by the time he came back, he was already famous because he'd been doing all of these um, shoots with Jim Morrison. And I'm just turning this off. I've got, there we go, no ding-dongs. So Bobby Klein has had immense fame. He, he became an overnight celebrity in LA with all the, all the musicians at that time, like you can imagine that era, you know, Janis Joplin, The Doors, um, Crosby, Stills and Water, da, 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 da. It goes on and on and on. It was like this epic time. He was placed there. And, and then he ended up in the celebrity world of LA movies. And at a certain point in his infamous life, he had always been having chan like channeling, just direct channeling happening. And he owned a, a restaurant with, J with Jack Nicholson at this point. So, you know, roll on. It had all happened, all this amazing life. And then he had this blinding, you know, um, instruction, shall we say, that he was to leave it all behind go and meet the Hopi elders in the middle of the desert. So he drove out and then all the Hopi elders were just waiting for him and saying, kind of what took you so long? And so he trained with them. He, he left all the fame behind. He trained with them for two years, lived with the Hopi, um, also lived with the Navajo at one point. He's fluent in Hopi and Navajo. And when he goes into his um, channeling, if you like, he speaks Hopi language. And 
It doesn't end there. His life is insane. Like, it's just like, I've never heard of anybody having this kind of life, you know. But roll on. He's also, he was responsible for bringing acupuncture into America and making it a legit um, scene. Uh, he's trained with Tibetans. He speaks Tibetan. He's trained, trained in Chinese medicine, fluently brought that into the States. He's a medical medium, so he, he can read bodies and he can read all sorts of things. And I had a, a magical meeting with him about seven or eight years ago. And he then started working with me. And he told me at a certain point about two years ago, you know, you're, all that information that you get that comes through is it's channeled information. You are a channeler. That's the correct term for it. But the kind of uh, channeler that you are is he did this thing with his guides and then they tell him I'm a finder, which sounds like a, a wonderful name. I'd love to have a card which just says finder. And finder means that I get big pieces of information when I often am sitting in front of somebody or and I don't always know what it's for. Sometimes I do, and I pass on the information or whatever, but if I go into a conscious route of looking, then I can find out very interesting information. And some of it is not of this world, not of this time, symbols that are meant for you, not necessarily for me, et cetera, et cetera. And so the end of last year, I said to Bobby, I'm going to take this very seriously and, and, um, and develop my skill set, if you like. And so in one of those sessions with myself, I got this massive instruction, a bit like when he got the Hopi, go work with the Hopi. I got, you're going to stop doing your own events. You're going to stop uh, working really with me pivoting into my own life and my ideas. And instead, it's urgent that you push these new earth leaders forward. And the skill sets that I have over many years of working in business and, um, you know, running festivals and that kind of thing is the skill set that they told me to get over to you guys. And so some of this was as, as big a surprise to me as it was probably for the other people I was working with. Sylvia was in a coaching program I was doing, and I basically realized, oh, this is the last batch of people I'm going to be training in that way. And then the next phase of whatever I need to do is there's this um, like urgent call for new earth leaders, and, and I need to work with them and get them out there. And the biggest way that we can do this to give you an idea of this is through digital online events. So I started changing all the structure in my business and my life to be able to start doing this work. And I want to give you the bigger picture for it so that you can understand the symbol. Hey, Sue, lovely to see you. Because everybody in a minute, I'll get you all to, to introduce yourself. But I want you to imagine like if I am right at the center of a circle and from this, there are these rays going out and they will be joining up people all around the world, mostly women. That's a key piece of this. There will be some men, but mostly women and seasonal. So it's like all these people on these, this, this vast wheel that's going round um, will have different topics there will be experts in their own right in certain areas which are essential for this transition in the earth history right now. And not only that, they will be different seasons because that's really important in the work I do. I work very much with Wheel of the Year. And if I am at the center of this and I can see who's doing what, I can also recommend certain people will speak on other pe people's events. There'll be a natural... Uh, reference point. It won't always work, right? Because not everybody, they're different, different topics, but it means that it's a great way to cause the maximum collaboration that could be um, possible at this time. And there's no competition, which is great. This is the whole kind of divine feminine uh, vibe. 
you do the bit that you feel you can do, which is uh, in each case, you may be differently placed to take more of a lead role, or you can be completely behind the scenes. It doesn't matter because the model is working from a very divine feminine model of invitation, collaboration, connection, and somebody doesn't have to be uh, in the old school. It used to be much more like they had to be assertive and um, super confident. And, you know, people who could take the stage would run events. They would manage events. That is not the case anymore. So we've got all this opportunity for people who are actually quite extra introvert to be behind the scenes. And through the collaboration form, the business model is going to be um, like next level. So I'm going to give you a little bit on the business model as well. You get the kind of this wheel of the spoke that's going around. And I'm already doing that with people. And what's so interesting is one person goes and speaks on another event, suddenly will pick up clients from that event, completely different topic and gets business. And they feed that back to me. I just go, wow, that's amazing. You know, they've, they do really well just through these connections that they make. Um, and before I introduce you all, I want to give you one other piece of, of, of like an intro to this. In the ancient times, ye ancient times of long ago, um, and maybe Mona, I don't know if you were, were you part of Roger Hamilton's um, group or if you had connection with them at all? Um, well, not directly, but Roger and I were on a summit with Ariella and Digger last year, and oh. I'm part of his genius you together with Ariella right now. Got um, it. Okay. Through Ariella's platform, I'm in there, yeah. Okay. Well, the reason I say that is because I thought you might have heard Roger talking a little bit about this, this piece of history. Um, but probably the rest of you haven't, unless maybe Sylvia knows this from me mentioning it. But... It's quite an amazing idea that in the past, many years ago, ancient times, there would be merchants and the word tread, track, is the derivative and root name of trade, track, tread. So you imagine there are all these merchants, they're coming along, they were all on horseback or walking, but there was definitely no vehicles of any kind at that time. And there would be natural places where they would stop and have a conversation. And those conversations um, ended up becoming a little bit like these, um, the, the conversation was first, right? So first it had to be like collaborative conversation. There was a reason why they stopped on their journey. It would be a good place to rest, but a good place to connect in with other people. And when you look at some of the, the root names of, of everything to do with, um, hey, Laura, nice to see you too. Um, when you look at the root names of like trade, like I said, whoop, comes from track, um, sales, a marketplace, actually the background of it is not what we think of as sales. It comes from connection, and conversation and if somebody had a good idea the goddess juno would give a sales token which was a blessing of love so if you had a good idea you would get a blessing the blessing then becomes currency and money it was called manata it's like so blessing money sales is actually connection tread is trackways hello nancy and Hello, so sorry about arriving so late. Oh, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. I'm just giving a very uh, weird and wonderful overview of why we're all here. <laughs> um, so you imagine all these merchants coming in and then there's a really good reason to have a conversation. It's all collaborative. And then some people's ideas are amazing. And so they get the tokens of Juno, which is like Monata, and money starts to happen, right? And now what we've got is those places are all the, um, the great trading towns. They're also the great trading seaports. And it's the old trading silk routes or routes that used to happen. 
And what we have now in New Earth happening is the very same thing of these ideas of hubs happening around a certain place are going to be the events that happen. They are, the events are now going to be the hubs. So you, you won't have a town, which will be the legacy. What you'll have is if you start your event and you, you own a topic. So this is the key piece. You own a topic fully. At the beginning of this time, when you've got 100% of events going down, like 100%. I'm going to say that one more time. 100% of events. So people really get that. 100%. It's not even 60% or 80%, which would be shocking, but 100% of events have gone down. And what that means is in that marketplace, that place where there was a reliable, understandable gathering of these people who would always be in the same places, listening to the same people and trading with the same people, that has been disrupted hugely, like overnight, boom. And so the, if you think of it like an open playing field right now for all these new earth leaders to come forward. And that, that was that piece that I was given in the channeling session that I experienced at the end of 2019, months before COVID happened. I just already knew there was something going on and that I'm, I'm somebody who can help people create this level of events where it will be you are the new leaders of of new earth in a way and then we can say what is new earth and new earth would have some consistency with ancient wisdom it would have something which is uh like the goodness of things that we've learned from the past it would be the best example i can give you right now is like look at organics you know, as an example, organics before the 1950s, when everybody was paid to spray poison all over the land, everything was organic, right? It wasn't called organic. It was just old farming techniques and techniques of the land were organic. And then boom, we have the 1950s when uh, fertilizer is, you know, it's big pharma gets involved with fertilizer. And so farmers are paid to spray everything with poison rather than being paid not to. And then we get to a place in history where we are right now, which is everybody's looking back at this pre spraying time and going, well, we have to name it. What is the name of a vegetable now, which has not been sprayed and we call it organic. That's new earth thinking, but lots of it is old. Lots of it is the old ancient ways. And then when you bring it into a new earth consciousness, there is, you add digital, you add the incredible potential for digital, the incredible potential for the global village so that you could be speaking to, you know, the most incredibly diverse people who say live in the Amazon, but all of a sudden you've got them at your fingertips and we have COVID is, like accelerated this right big time so that all of you who are potentially thinking about doing events if you start to bring in some of these themes with your events of thinking like like don't do anything less than global so that's number one you know don't ever think that something's going to be in your local church hall right <laughs> those days have gone Good luck with that. I mean, it's like, it really is so old fashioned and you can feel it, right? But that is how many of you have operated. You've been local and you've thought that is, that's your audience, that's the way to go. If you can shift all of that and think the number one um, piece that you're going to walk away with right now is I'm, I'm global, like I'm global and nothing less than that. So I want to interrupt myself and do intros from everybody. And it would be really nice to, to just introduce yourself. You could, I'd say, what's your topic and where are you in the world? Cause that's, what's so interesting about this. Um, 
So should we just, I mean, I see you guys in one way, but um, let's just, I'm going to name you, okay? So you can just say something. So Sylvia, start, unmute and tell us where you are and what your topic is for your event. Um, currently, I'm in Austria, uh, going back and forth between Atlanta and Atlanta, Georgia, and Austria. And my town, where I'm right now at, is very famous for salt trade in the olden days. So we traded salt. Uh, and my topic is baby holding. I wrote a little e-booklet called I am a baby holder. And uh, the logo uh, looks pretty much what you described, <laughs> like the sun in the middle. I, I call it my eye. So I can show you the logo on my little e-book. I'm a baby holder. And I'm currently holding my two little grandsons in 10 days. I'm going back, holding right. them again. Fabulous. And, 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 and yeah, I want to do my whatever this is online then um, next year or whenever the time is right. <laughs> yeah, and we can talk yeah. about that in yes, a minute, yeah. like timing. Mm -hmm. um, but let's go to Brooke. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sylvia. Yeah, uh, nice to meet you, Sylvia. Um, so yeah, my name, and nice to see you, Sally. Sorry, <laughs> took you for granted there. Um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, so my name is Brooke and uh, I'm currently in Norwich, uh, UK. Um, and yeah, I've got a nice view of some good trees and a really strong seasonal, like autumnal vibe right in front of me with flying birds. So just to let you know my vibe here. Um, <laughs> And I, um, so I spent many, many years being a musician, singer, songwriter, um, and I guess recently got more interested in uh, journeys of like recovery and the, 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 the strong, can you hear me? Yeah, Ooh. you're going in and out. It's a bit slow, but I can hear you. Yeah, slow. can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, my connection's not great. Um, so I guess I'm not quite sure about how specific my topic is yet. I just suddenly, you know, I was just saying to Sally the other day, I've been meditating a lot and Sally come, came up a few times. So I kind of wanted to just reach out to her. Um, so it's very early days in terms of what, how specific I'm going in, into um, what sort of event I want to put on. But um, I would say it's like I'm seeing kind of like a little bridge between um, science and spirituality and just like trying to like detect what areas, um, yeah, I find interesting and inspiring. But anyway, it's such a big topic. Um, but I, yeah, I'm just kind of, that's my first step really. Um, yeah, fabulous. Mind with spirituality sort of thing, yeah. And soon to be moving to Norway, which I love, to live yeah. in a tiny little cabin somewhere. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. We haven't found a cabin yet, but we're putting it out <laughs> in the universe, so let's see. So, Anya. Here we go. Right, yes, um, I'm in, I can't even pronounce the religious name, um, it's Western in Cheshire. What I like to do mostly, or I'm passionate about, is um, Reiki and crystals. But I've also started um, a priestess puff, the one of the um, Magdalene, Mary Magdalene's rose puff type of thing. And that it was very interesting. So I think I haven't quite found my niche yet. Because ideally, I would combine all of it. Because even while the Reiki, that is a traditional Reiki, the Shodan and that stuff, has worked very deeply. It was the priestess, which has really shifted stuff on a amazing level. So... I think I just have to see and wait how it develops. 
Right. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mona. Okay. So, I'm from Johannesburg in South Africa. And um, I guess what interested me in joining this was your topic of the New Earth, Sally. And, um, well, I teach about money, but the sacred wisdom about money and a, and a fun, loving relationship with money. But what I'm being guided to do for an online event, which I'm currently, well, looking at and bringing together is a virtual retreat um, titled The Future, the Future is Women. And when I listened to your, your uh, Zoom call, I think it was last week, and when you spoke about the feminine, so that was more, it, it was exactly in line. And when I was listening to you today, Sally, I'm like, wait, I've got to get my seekers together. I think Sally's going to be one of the best <laughs> ones to have on there, you know? Um, so I'm just putting it out there. Um, because even though it's about money and I work with conscious female leaders, you know, who are all the ladies and all of you here today, um, it's like more going into the feminine and bringing the feminine back into the power seat without being afraid of the power that's emerging. Mm, fabulous. And yes, of course, delighted to speak on your whatever. Okay. <laughs> your you your communication from me. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Great. Okay, Laura. And this is just the way I'm seeing you guys on my screen. So Laura, go ahead. Tell us where uh, you are. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. coming through. Thick. I had a problem with my mic class yesterday with someone. Um, lovely to uh, connect and meet with you all. Um, and apologies for being late. I had someone called me right before this was about to start and it was an important call. Um, so yes, I am an, uh, an actress, writer, um, filmmaker, uh, and I've moved into sort of singer songwriting and also worked uh, with energy healing work with people for many years. And I've had this strong calling now and lots of signs from the universe to begin um, helping create an event to allow people to access their creativity, something that I kind of developed through creating all the projects and the writing and the films and the, the different things that I've done. So yeah, I'm really excited to be going into the mechanics of how I was able to create things and helping other people feel empowered to go and do that. So I'm really excited that it's taking my work from just one-to-one -one physical contact or being alone writing for a long time to actually connecting with people and using this time this really interesting time that we're in to actually spread out globally and not to um to think small anymore so yeah that's kind of where I'm at and I'm pregnant as well I've just <laughs> that's another <laughs> so uh yeah biggest creation I'll ever um, <laughs> go into fabulous thank you uh Nancy Uh, I'm in Ontario, Canada. Um, topic, event, no, I don't know it yet, but I'm um, studying to be a life coach specialized in ADHD because I've found out I've got ADHD last year, so it explains so many things. But I'm so open to learning and I'm kind of reconnecting with uh, all the passions I had when I was younger, because I'm already 56, but way back when, like in my 20s, I was so open to the natural and the energy and the, like everything. So I'm back into it, trying to learn as much as I can. So, um, Are you event, Canadian? Are you pardon? Canadian? Are you Canadian? Yes. I yes. can hear it. From I used Quebec, to live in actually. Canada. Yeah. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> so, anyway, I, I just find you so interesting. Like I've seen some of your things. And just, oh, I have to Thank you. <laughs> I yeah. find you so interesting. <laughs> okay, very cool. Um, I don't know if it's Irene or Irene. It's Irene. 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 <laughs> Irene? Irene, yeah. Irene. 
So hello, I'm in Switzerland in the French speaking part. And I used to uh, teach music and movement for 30 years and uh, especially also improvisation. And now I'm preparing uh, uh, an album, an EP. Uh, so I've been uh, writing the songs and working with the producer. And I stopped teaching last year and now it's a big earthquake because I have no home and no, uh, <laughs> no fixed revenue. And I'm trying to figure out how to do, uh, make a living without teaching because uh, it, it got me burnt out. And you were uh, telling me last time we, we met that it could be uh, creating an event uh, about performing. And that would really resonate because I, I was also uh, a director. I, I, love, I love to prepare shows or videos. Uh, so I, I like to meld all, the, all kind of arts. And I was also thinking while, while the people were, were talking, um, I feel there is something behind my projects as, as a singer, there is a, there is a character who is beyond me, who is Ren, is, she's like a shaman on the queen of the ocean. <laughs> and there is a very comforting tonality and a spiritual connection to help people uplift and come to a, a quieter place. And I also uh, was very struck by the work about sacred sexuality. So everything is there in the air and I don't know exactly what will happen. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, so Sue, Sue. Hello, uh, my name is Sue Ann Young, and I'm currently based in Sunnyvale, California, in the U.S. And um, I don't have any specific topic at the moment, but my current focus is on um, my self-discovery journey. So I'm in transition to figure out, you know, what. Um, uh, that will lead me to. Great. Thank you, thank you. And Sally Shakti. Hello, darling. Hey, Sally. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm a writer, poet, uh, yogi poet, witch, word alchemist, um, do journaling practice and uh, support people with personal transformation and uh, uh, copywriting for events. And um, yeah, I'm here because uh, I do a lot of the copywriting for the New Earth events, um, and that's my speciality, um, high vibrational copywriting that's heart aligned uh, with your purpose. So um, if anybody wants to connect on that, uh, then you know, we can connect through Sally. Um, and uh, I'm just really interested to hear where all of you are at with your journeys as well. Um, oh, and I love... Uh, Laura, your colour matching uh, in your in your framing with your clothing and your your pillows was uh, just spot on. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's that's amazing when you start to see who you know, like every single topic that you you know are throwing out there already, even though you don't know fully maybe what you're doing, is already piquing our interest. Right, that's that's an immediate thing that happens. Um, if you considered this was just a circle, how many people are four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? A circle of ten women sitting in a circle, and we were talking about our ideas. A piece that one of the pieces I want you to go away with from this is I want you to own your space, like own it. And why I say that is because in this space that we've got and talk about paradynamics of spaciousness which is a big divine feminine teaching we have a space going on thank you covid you know as bobby klein said to me well whoa human race needed a big kick up the ass for this one you know we could have had the lesson in a different way but it was like no we really needed this like you know, to be knocked sideways with the, with the impact. And what we get is space. And what you get is often to go home into your little nurturing cozy den because you can't go out in the way that you may have been in the past. And that's exactly like an incubator for hatching some of the best ideas probably that you'll ever have in your life. And right now you won't even know that because you'll just be dealing with life, you know? So, 
already the first thing that we've got is we have a space on the planet and for you to step up you don't have to get everything right so old order is you know rat race dog eat dog all in competition with one another uh, no collaboration only one's going to get to the top the rest are you know failures old order that's old order language this is different this is space the feminine with invitations going out into that space of collaboration and collaboration doesn't have to be at the same level so for instance right now for the first time possibly ever we have the opportunity to invite in to our spaces people who are much more advanced than we are right so somebody who happens to be um you know like in brooke's case like somebody who's really developed uh, along the music path well let's just she could invite prince if he was alive right now to work in her uh on her event because all those barriers have been knocked down now People aren't able to do the things that they were all able to do before. And what that's caused is this wonderful disruption where you would assume, oh, I can't get that person to work with me or I can't ask them to do something or other. Actually, now you can. That's part of this divine feminine thing is that the, the, all those coaches, all those entertainers, all those people who have been doing it one way, all the way for the whole of their life, suddenly aren't going to be able to function in the same way. So invites will mean like they're leveling. Invites are level. You know, you can invite anyone you want to your event now. And into the space also, there's this sense that collaboration and the event models that I'm using very much and I've been studying to see all the bits that work financially, all the bits that work with marketing, all the bits that probably a lot of you guys have you know, less interest in or feel like the icky bits of an event, right? So that there are models that are working in new earth that were not working one year ago. There are models that are starting to take off. I, I used to work with a lot of high-end coaches and let's say the average price, for instance, was 15,000 to 25,000 a package that they were selling. And if they did an event, it would be in the physical, and you would be on this three day like intensive, you could barely go to the bathroom. You were in this, you know, these rooms, it was intense, intense. And what I noticed during those experiences was yes, there was high um, learning, but there was also no regard for well being at all, like none, zero. The food was, you know, you're in a horrible hotel usually. There was no way of getting to. Like there was nothing nourishing about it, right? It was just this high intensity thing. And then the pitch level and the sales cycle that went throughout it would be to knock out as many of these, you know, 25,000 offers to all of you, like right now. And that was the energy. <laughs> it was sort of like this. And now some of them have tested the water on, on the internet. And what shows up is that sometimes doing a much, much, much lower offer but placing it in a certain order of events means that they're making three times as much as they were selling high ticket offers. And that is extraordinary. That, like, that is just mind blowing. Firstly, because it means that the lower offers are reaching more people. Um, many people in the spiritual and creative world, one of the biggest, um, hitches they have, and Mona will know this, is that they all undersell themselves or they're all uncomfortable around money or money is like this dirty topic that we're going to leave over there and I'm going to do my pure art and I'm going to be poor, but I'm going to be real and my friends will love me and I'll be, you know, real poor. And now that's shifted to actually, you know, there's a message here that creative, spiritual, vital, important people with the topic that you need to step forward and own right now, like own it like it's a space that you're owning. Like I'm willing to take this on, you know, like that ownership. I don't mean like buy it ownership. I mean like 
I am willing to just take that piece and I don't know the full realms of where it's going to and I don't know its full potential, but I'm willing to like take a gamble on that and I'm going to speak it into existence. I'm going to speak this thing into existence. And so what's happening is we're going to flip the, um, the financial model because what will happen is the feminine divine feminine model of collaboration is everybody wins. You would not have women giving birth to babies and sending them off to war. You would not have women giving birth to babies and saying, well, two of them are going to starve and the rest are going to do really well. That's just not, you know, women's energy at all. So what we've got is a leveling right now. And some of the old order, as I've mentioned before, is going down. Yay. And it will be, um, there'll still be that struggle because we'll still be looking to some of those old outdated models and thinking that's the way things happen. Brooke recently was talking to me about it and I was re referring to this with Prince, who is my ultimate um, guru hero. But Prince broke the record industry because he was so prolific. He was writing an album practically a day. They, they said it would take a hundred years for us to release all of his music. That's how much is in the vault. And then he's dealing with a record company who is only allowing him to do one album a year and taking all the money. I don't even know what, what musicians were given at that time, but it could have been something as disgusting as 7.5%. They're the ones who have all the creativity, but the producers, uh, record producers, were the ones taking most of the money for that and limiting uh, stopping the flow of creativity because they're trying to manage the markets. So they're always managing the outcome. And so now we've got a flip that's going on right now. And it's super exciting because we're stepping into a realm that you can own a space, if you like, declare it yours, add in the ingredients. And I really recommend three ingredients into your space. Um, so that it becomes a super niche, which is one of my things. Like I'm really good at finding people's super niche. And so I think what might be a good starting point, because this is just the beginning of a little journey I want to take you on, is to actually do a 10 minute um, meditation where I can take you on a bit of a journey and start getting you in touch with what the super niche is for you. And so sit down. If you need to go to the bathroom, please do that quickly. Or you need a break. Can I do that? Really? Yeah. Can I do that? <laughs> you can do yeah, that. Yes. 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 It's a women's group. Yes, you can. <laughs> I can stroke a cat too. It's all part of business. It's all good. Have a cup of tea. Come on, Phoenix. And then for the rest of you, just allow yourself to sink back into your chairs. Uncross your legs and your hands. Take a deep breath in and exhale through your mouth. And another one of those deep breath in through your nose. Exhale through your mouth and just shut your eyes, allow yourself to be really soft, going heavy, dissolving into your chair. Keep your hands and legs uncrossed, breathing through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. And with the next breath, start to breathe in all the energy of the autumn coming in. I'm breathing out any stresses or strains of the day. And as you breathe in, start to breathe in into every cell of your body. So you start to imagine that every cell of your body is drawing in that fresh, vibrant autumn energy. 
And as you're breathing out any areas that are stuck or constricted, and breathing in again, breathing into every cell of your body, igniting that energy. And as you breathe out anything where there's doubt, disappointment, resentment, and breathing in again through your nose, now breathing into the back of the heart, opening up this spaciousness at the back of the heart, often which we shut down with heartbreak or disappointment, breathing into those pockets, opening it up and breathing out any of that disappointment like black smoke. <sighs> breathing into the back of the heart, imagining it opening up a thousand times behind you as if you're in the most massive heart space living room. Imagine you are moving backwards into that space, into these spaces that you have never occupied and breathing out anything that is constricted or tired or bored. Just breathe that out. And breathing into this wonderful living room in the back of your heart, a thousand times bigger than these spaces have been before. And imagine yourself sitting around a fire, sitting in the group, this group of women who are sitting in your own heart space fire with vast, ceilings and vast space around on every side. You can feel even that the depth of the earth beneath your feet or beneath your bottom as you sit cross-legged around this fire. And then above you, you feel that there's this space that moves higher all the way to the top of this gigantic ceiling but then it goes even further out. You can feel it going out into space, into galaxies. And then the fire at the center of this circle of women sitting here, recognizing that we are all new earth leaders and that you're sitting in this circle because you've been called here and that your idea, which is dancing in the fire now, so you're looking into this fire and you can see there's blues and greens and oranges and yellows and purples all flickering. And there's the crackling of a fantastic inspirational fire. And as you're just gazing into this fire, starting to imagine a word that comes to you, which in inhabits and embodies and encompasses every piece of you what would be the first word that comes in? Breathe that word in and breathe it out. So allowing yourself to just receive from this great fire of inspiration, which is all the guidance that you will ever need. Allowing yourself to start to play with ideas that we're sitting a council of 10 new earth leaders, who are here because we have got a responsibility to this earth. We have a willing responsibility to all humans, all animals, all the plants, all nature, all environment of the waters of the earth, of the skies, and that there's a nobleness to this intention as we sit around this fire and that there is a gift which you have. And this gift, if you wanted to imagine it, we are imagining it as an event, but I want you to just imagine that we're sharing in this circle like a family of sisters. And one of them who's quite buoyant and excitable like me says to the other one, Hey, you know, what do you want to do? What's your idea? What's your word? And you tell us your word and you can start to see that it's not the same as anybody else's. That really we have not been brought here to produce the same results. That we are here sitting in a circle, a council of elders who are actually being asked to bring forth, bring birth to this idea and that the sense of ownership 
that has been in the past has been, I own it. This is different. This is, I am a guardian of this. I am a guardian of this beautiful energy. And so you can take that word as the starting point and imagine that you have a, a ball of light starting to form between your hands, which is just held somewhere around the solar plexus. And it starts with this word that popped out of the fire, a word that really you would always pay attention to. It always speaks to you. And as you breathe into this ball of energy, which is your electric charge, your energetic vibration that we're creating, and this is a guardianship. So ownership is being understood like that. But you are taking care of this ball, this space, and now we're going to expand that with every breath that you breathe into this ball, you want to start to feel it glowing. Because this is what you're here to do. You're here to actually bring light and life to this guardianship of this space. And so now, now expanding from the word itself into if you could have any event and invite anyone you wanted to and it could be any kind of theme start to inquire into this ball of energy what are three words that are a good fit for that So you just imagine what is the space of guardianship that you are taking care of? And then allow a flash of this kind of imagination to be like, is it a fancy ball? Is it a fancy dress ball? Is it, um, you know, a group of Renaissance painters having a painting party? Is it priestesses on the moors out with some standing stones having that kind of event? Is it a group of children who are learning art? Is it musicians sitting on ice caps in glaciers playing the sounds of their strings to the sounds of the ice moving? Is it that kind of event? Is it a full moon event? Is it a dance party? Is it a sea of babies wriggling all over the earth in some beautiful safe place in the sunshine? with happy mothers there. And just get a feel of the wildness of the imagination around this feeling of the space that you're now taking guardianship of. And feel the excitement that you feel when you're there. So imagine what it's like being at your own event. and feel the thrill of being at the center of that, surrounded by a group of collaborators who have all been invited there to accelerate your energy and your idea forward. And breathing that into your every cell of your body. And start to feel this glow, this ball, which is gathering energy in the solar plexus area. And I'd like you to just take some energy from below. So solar plexus is where it's being held. But we're just going to invite all the sexual energy to join in now. So we just 
move the ball slightly lower over your belly womb space and invite all that uninhibited joy and pleasure to join in this emotional cocktail. Like the thrill of I can do whatever I want. I can be whoever I want. And then imagine it going a little lower and imagining the earth energy joining it so that this is, this will take place and manifest. This is not just a fantasy. The earth energy joins in willingly. So that what you feel is like an actual sphere, which is a solid between your hands. And now let's inhale it all the way up to the heart. So as you take a big inhale, this ball that you have, you can move your hands up into that space is now taking on the energy of love. Of you receiving as much love and you giving out as much love and that the effect and influence on this event is love and how proud you are of that. We're going to imagine this moving up to the throat chakra now and we're adding in the words, the voice, the being heard and the truth. For some of you the essence of what you're doing will contain a great deal of truth that needs to be spoken on new earth. And as we breathe it up one layer up into the third eye, imagine this ball of light now moving into your third eye space. And it's like a magnetic radio wave, which is pulsing and connecting because we've now placed it here so that you will be attracting all the right people into this space which you are taking care of as collaborators. And now it floats up to the crown chakra Imagine this ball of energy now above the top of your head, about a foot above it. And it's like a glowing, powerful ball of energy. And this is where we're asking for divine connection, source to also connect in with all your guides, of everything that you're ever here to do, of higher purpose. And you may feel a tingling in the crown of your head as you feel the connection take root. So we're gonna take a really slow, deep breath in and exhale. And you're going to do that again, but as you slowly breathe in, when you exhale, I want you to imagine these balloon balls just take flight and start to float up. So take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, you release them from your crown chakra. And they start to go upward. Far, far up. Imagine this group of balls of energy going all the way up past the Earth's atmosphere. Up into the stars. And communicating on a very, very high level.
So start to rub your hands together. And place your palms over your closed eyes. Breathe in. And exhale. And then you can rub your forehead, hair, throat, jaw, face. And allow yourself to just come back into the space. All right, Isabel, you have joined us. Hi. Hey, Isabel, lovely to see you. Yeah. So I wanted to uh, give you that sense of this is this is the kind of creation of New Earth, right? And if you don't have any inhibitions or any reason to be doing things or sticking to a usual course of action, then you can gather, gather information like that. And the thing about, you know, new earth and this consciousness is some of the ideas are very ancient. We're using very different techniques. And so, what would have come through at that time is your pure joy and essence and what you're proud of looking after on the planet. There would have been a hit of something raw there, which is the beginning of your super niche. And for some of you, you would have had it like really clear. So some, it will be raw and unformed, but with a, an emotional real reality. And others will be more like, oh, it was this word, that word, that word. So I'd like to hear from somebody. <laughs> somebody, would somebody like to say anything I'll about their? Them. Yeah, I'll Brooke, go for it. Um, yeah, so the first, I kind of like, it felt like an escalation from kind of, it was like outer to inner, that transition, that bridge. Um, from kind of left brain into kind of right brain intuition. So I had intuition as the kind of, um, you know, and I think this is just the start of my specific niche, really. I think it's just that. But then the words off that came like, you know, the things, all the things that kind of bridge us into that space. So like art, but art that opens up into love rather than it's egoic, egoic or, yeah, Order. And then I was like kind of psychology teaching and like mixed with spirituality. So kind of bridging those two. Anyway, that that's kind of came about <laughs> in my world. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, yeah. Very useful. So the bridge, which you've mentioned before, is a name that you like. Mm. So put that down. Put intuition as one of the highest frequencies in there. Mm. That's your word. That's one of the words that's just coming to you. Mm. Um, then you can put the other, which is slightly more logical, reasonable, which is the scientific meets, what was the other? Sorry, science yeah, meets sure. psychology. With art, with art, actually. So com like the mixing of those platforms in a way. Heart art or something. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. So this is really good information. Mm. And, um, Anyone else want to tell us a few of your words? Yeah, I like that. Sylvia put in the chat, hurt. Did mm -hmm. you see that? Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I had, sorry. Yeah, go for it, whoever it was. Who ushered. Anya. Right. Anya. Um, first thing I actually had was um, healing, and then I got art. And I saw myself like like a priestess because we've been talking about the the rocks and energy. Mm. 
Mm. So the biggest thing, just to give you an idea of, you know, when I do a lot of training of entrepreneurs, the biggest thing that I hear, one of the biggest things is, I can't do that because everybody else has done that, <laughs> right? It's this biggest first level of blockage is how, can, but mine is just the same. It's the same words as everybody else. And actually when you combine your words, it isn't, it never is. So yes, there's been many things done with art. There's been many things done with um, music. There's been many things done with whatever. But what we were looking at is what are the things that are reflecting like this bundle that you're getting? And you will start to see a super niche forming for you, which nobody is doing. Like nobody, 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 nobody is doing. But the key about it is, it's this being willing to take guardianship of that space. And when you take guardianship of an idea, if you like, there's a proudness that you have in the way that you speak about it. Um, there's an authority. There's also confidence in the way that you speak about it because nobody else is doing the same thing, right? Not really. There's these, these increments of difference that will happen for everybody. Um, so let's hear a couple more. Anybody else want to unmute? Yeah, go for it, Laura. Yeah, I'll just say it, it was a complete confirmation for me because creativity was flashed up and it was almost this golden word and it, it, it just confirmed the last, what, 10 years of my life, I've been absolutely passionate about creativity and passionate about inspiring children to ignite that creative spark. But I felt in a, I was trying to do it in a deadened world. And what I saw in the visualization was people, I saw this creative bonfire of everything. And then I saw people giving themselves the permission to just splat paint on a, on a, on a canvas or to just sing or create something. And it's, and I, I, I feel really committed to wanting to help people give themselves the permission to access their divinity and to unwrap a gift. And it was really, really clear in the meditation. And thank you because, um, the guardianship makes me feel that, that it, it's starting to all resonate on a really deep soul level that I'm here to guardian creativity. And yep. if I yep. pass this earth, <laughs> the one thing I'm going to do is <laughs> help people access their creativity. So thank you. You can have splatter parties on Zoom. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, we have time for one more. So anybody else want to? speak into the space go yeah i would like to go oh. <laughs> the very first word was love <laughs> and then it led to share compassion healing joy light and lightness and then i remember that i have i've made a, a long course with Ariela indigo and at the very end she she channeled the, the phrase she she got for me and it was bringing the beauty into structures and it, it makes sense again. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so then the words were around the very first one is dance. So it's dancing, singing, and it's creating with people in the nature. And then I had a lot of names that popped up, like people that I already crossed in my professional life or, or artists with whom I've been working already. And I always felt something. So it, it's coming and popping up. <laughs> so wonderful yeah so this this ingredients are really important these little ingredients they're the bits that we usually bypass and we just go oh you know it doesn't really mean anything or it's raw actually they are really powerful ingredients to make your event um outstanding so because i have to go on another call um right now what i'm going to suggest is there are all sorts of ways that we can move each forward and I can definitely do another group thing. But my next thing that I suggest is that you and I individually take your idea to the next level, just to the next level about the concept, what it, what actually is your event? Is it a festival? Is it a splatter party? Is it a, you know, and, then I can call us all together again and we can do the next level of creation together as well, which I'd really like to do with you. 
um, because it's just so freaking amazing, this stuff. Like as people are bubbling with their, you know, their genius, there's lots of obvious practical ways that I can really help you. But the, the thing that I need, and I can't do this in a group, I need to flash some ideas with you individually to get the next piece. And so what I'm going to suggest you do is, um, do you all have my email? I'm going to give you my WhatsApp as well. Are all of you on WhatsApp or not? WhatsApp. Oop. Hang on, let me just get this right. So what, what I suggest you do is, there we go. Okay, here's my phone number. I really like WhatsApp. So that's my phone number. And you know my, I'm keeping this, I've got two companies. So this is under this email, sally at the visionaries.international, because all this work I'm doing is under the New Earth Visionaries. Send me a connection when I can have, we would probably need about half an hour to do the next level individually. And then what I will do, I want to get everybody's emails as well who's, um, who's been on this group. Um, so I will have the list. My assistant isn't with me, but she'll tell me next week. But what I wouldn't mind is to make it easy for me is for you to just put your emails in here or your phone numbers in so that I can copy and paste this right now and we can just start doing it. We just start moving you to the next step of your um, your planning. And the other thing is I want you to deeply consider a timing. I want you to deeply consider timing. So for me, when I'm in that space of pure creation and I'm thinking about, uh, there's an event I'd like to do actually, which is all about ceremony. Um, I've been feeling into it and it's, it's always some time around May or June. It's always got that energy in it. Um, so I want you to just, that's one of the things you can start to do is take those ingredients and then start thinking, hey, you know, what is the, the feel of the energy around this event? What is the timing? And take note, don't put three or five options, like, you know, like start to really nail things. So what is the timing of my event? Ask yourself very deeply, what is that question? Um, and what I will get, my assistant who comes back on, she's having a holiday, yay, she's in Greece, but she will email you with, the, with this again. So you've got this recording. And then she'll also, um, I will make some, like we'll, we'll just speak to each other because there's not, it's not too many, so we can do that. And let's just get some time booked in. So it'll be half an hour max to take this to the next level. But in that, in that timing, also ask yourself, what is the timing for this? Okay. It's a beautiful beginning of a beautiful journey. And, um, and honestly, it's like, if you can work like this towards doing something, I started one year, I just thought I'm going to do a festival. I'm going to do a festival, just like that. It was... Okay. Do you mind if I talk a little bit, actually? I was just yeah. saying yeah, how amazing it was to just hear everyone's kind of ideas and um, and also to like, just, to, just I've been doing shadow work for a while and it's really interesting arising, like when I hear someone that like, that are really kind of linked with my, linked in somehow, like there's initial jealousy, but then there's a sort of transformation of that energy. There's a sort of like, oh, that's that's mine. But then there's a sort of like, oh no, this is, this is like expansion. This is like kind of nothing's, yeah. And then it just felt like that. But anyway, I was, um, I wanted to talk to, I can't remember your name with the long blonde hair. Laura. Laura, that's it. Cause um, yeah, it would be lovely to talk to you sometime. There's, there's, there's some ideas that just kind of, add, that probably could add to yours in a way that I think would be or something to talk about or whatever so anyway yeah so you guys are, are on a, a level <laughs> you are and i heard it like 
you know, you can hear these ideas wanting to be burst all over the place, you know. I guess everyone's got their unique vibration and yeah. how they'll share that is is perfect. And th 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 there's yeah. no two things the same. That's that's what I love about it. Yeah. So no, thank you. Exactly so much. Right. It's been amazing. Thank you. Oh, good. I've, I've, I've enjoyed really? it thoroughly. Getting little sparks of ideas going, popping all over the universe. Yeah, I love it. So um, that's my suggestion. Um, and then I'll come up with another time when we can meet and try and get everybody on that. And if not, you'll receive a, a, a recording of that one too, if you can't be there to take it to the next level. But in between, let's have a chat. Yeah. Yeah. Thank and you so much. Such a pleasure. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening and weekend and all of the rest of it. And start hatching, hatching, hatching these ideas. Take guardianship of your space. It's a very powerful time right now. And we need these leaders. We really need you not to back down. So namaste. So much love. Lots of, yeah. See you later. I'll be in touch with all of you. Or you, if you get there first, get in touch with me. <laughs> Mwah. Bye. 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 Thank mm -hmm. you.